Hi guys, it is a getting to be once again a gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in Brooksville, Florida. I've managed to get my little my little uh, wildlife harassing dog who is back on his leash. Yes. You know you're no, no, you're not gonna start harassing the wildlife again. The, har the wildlife will harass you back. Anyway, it is getting to be a gorgeous Friday, January fifth, twenty seventeen. So, it being Friday, it is time for my leadoff twenty eighteen ecological meltdown roundup rant, where I simply open up my email box for more evidence of how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour here in the opening week of uh, 2018 and I'm going to continue in 2018 like I wrapped up 2017 doing splitting this into two rants where part one of this rant every week we're going to look at Manga Bay Manga Bay uh, dot com for their take on the state of the planet each week and then we'll come back with part two where I look at some other newsletters but let's just dive right in with good old Manga Bay now you're on a leash so when I put you down you can't run off and harass uh, the little the, the little animals so you just might as well find something else to do with yourself all right little dog Okay, Manga Bay. How fucked are we? Uh, the opening salvo of 2017. And. Alright. Am I queued up? This is, you know, what they do in the first week of 2018 is do all of these roundup stories from 2017 that I've already covered. So I'm just going to touch on this. This is their Rainforest 2017 year in review uh, written by my buddy Rhett Butler, the head cook and bottle washer at Manga Bay, who I hope to be interviewing here shortly. <clears throat> Between America's abandonment of leadership on conservation and environmental policy, Brazil's backtracking on forest conservation, massive forest fires worldwide, and the revelation of a sharp increase in global forest loss in 2016. 2017 was a rough year for tropical rainforest. No shit, Sherlock. Still, there were bright spots. That was bullshit. Yes, the only bright spots being the wildfires ravaging the uh, forest of the planet. <clears throat> anyway, thank you for your hard work, Brett, and we look forward to uh, another year. So their very next article talking about bright spots we see in the opening week of 2018, Brazil, Brazil, uh, under the leadership of the second biggest planet eater on the planet, Michael Tamir, we have this absolutely astonishing headline right here. Brazil announces end to Amazon mega dam building policy. Bullshit detected. Yeah, yeah. Just like uh, Sancho Panza announces an end to his chipmunk chasing policy. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's uh, let let's put on the let's put on the uh, knee high rubber boots and wade into this bullshit. Brazil's government this week announced a major shift away from its policy of building mega dams in the Brazilian Amazon. Bullshit level, Defcon 5. Yes, a strategy born 
during the country's military dictatorship in the 1960s and vigorously carried forward to the present day. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, the Michael Tamer government claims the decision is a response to intense resistance from environmentalists and indigenous groups. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. But experts see other causes as well, mainly the current depressed state of Brazil's economy, which makes it unlikely that Brazil's huge development banks will invest in such multi-billion dollar projects. No, they don't have to worry about it because China's huge development banks will invest in such multi-billion dollar projects. Jesus. While environmentalists and indigenous groups will likely celebrate the shift away from the Meganam policy. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Experts warn that even without multi billion dollar Meganams, experts warn that many threats to the Amazon remain. No shit, Sherlock. Including pressure by Brazil's ruralist lobby to open up protected areas and indigenous lands to agribusiness, along with threats posed by new road, rail, waterway, and mining projects. No shit, Sherlock. Is, is there anybody in Humpty Dumpty tribe believing for one minute that Brazil is going to walk away from its mega dam building policy. There's going to be a, at best, a temporary little pause until China steps in with the money. Oh, God. Anyway, let's get back to reality from the Brazilian Amazon to, I guess, this is just anywhere on the planet where there is a coral reef, the global reef ecosystems, reefscape. Yes, what is going on to uh, the global reefscape? We know that human activities have taken an extensive toll on reef, reef ecosystems world Wide. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Anyway, this is just the first in a series of articles this year that will chronicle the field work ongoing in 2018 to uh, track the continuing collapse of the global reef system. Okay, then they do their top 20 forest stories uh, review for 2017. I've gone all I've gone over them already, so I'm just gonna mention story number one about rebel road expansion bringing deforestation to the remote Colombian Amazon. Uh, and with the demobilization of Colombia's FARC militant group, the country is taking advantage of the roads they built to expand agriculture and infrastructure in places in the country once too dangerous to develop. I just mentioned that story a couple of weeks ago. Uh, okay, now, well... I, I wish, well, well, Rhett, he, he, he organizes his stories just by the way they came in, you know, so, I, so he kind of jumps around. So we're going, going to go back from the Amazon back to the, uh, the reefs of the planet. Reef bleaching 
now five times more frequent than it was in the 1980s new study finds. No shit, Sherlock. Severe coral bleaching is now happening about every six years, whereas in the 1980s it took place every 25 to 30 years. And so this is a, the reason this is a problem is because it takes at least 10 years for a coral reef to recover from a bleaching event. Can you do the math here? So, unless humans act to halt the rise of global temperatures, scientists now predict that we are heading for a time when reef bleaching might become an annual occurrence. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, what is <coughs> Indonesia looking like at the opening bell of 2018? Indonesia in 2017 and now in 2018, a fighting chance for peatlands protection. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. But an infrastructure beat down, beat down for indigenous communities. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, anyway, that's what uh, it's looking like in, in Indonesia, where efforts to recognize indigenous people's rights continue at a glacial pace and frequently clash with the government's ambitious infrastructure building push. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, here we go again. You know, so much of, of uh, usually, yeah, you, you know, this is just manga bays and Rhett Butlers, and this is the main thing that I want to talk to Rhett about if I get to talk to him next week. Uh, is about his apocaloptimism, how he's one of these guys, and, and Rhett's a great guy. He is one of my Humpty Dumpty tribe heroes, but why he continues to put these Hollywood endings on, onto these stories. Uh, and this is a perfect example. Scientists say some climate change impacts are already unavoidable. No shit, Sherlock. But, but the worst of them can still be avoided. Oh, God. Oops, I got a call. How do I ignore this call? I didn't even realize I was on the internet out here. Uh, let's see. So, this is looking at the Helix Project, which involves more than 50 scientists from 16 in institutions in 13 countries who have spent the past four years examining the impacts of global temperatures rising an average of one and a half, two, four, or six degrees. And according to this new research, global temperatures have already risen one degree Celsius. And at least another half degree of warming is likely, is likely already baked into the system, likely, you know, which button do I push? It is guaranteed. That means that even if we do manage to rapidly decarbonize the global economy, some impacts of climate change are probably, probably still unavoidable. Warning. 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 Nothing probably 
about it. It was 22 fucking degrees in Brooksville, Florida last night, thanks to, that is just one unavoidable impact of climate change, that it is colder in central Florida than it is Alaska. Probably my ass. Half degree baked into the cake, my ass. All right, let's look at what's going on. What is the forecast for Papua New Guinea's rainforest? One of the last major intact rainforest systems left on planet Earth today. Gee, no shit, Sherlock. An early push into Papua, palm oil firms set the stage for massive forest plunder. No shit, Sherlock. Large scale deforestation and a high number of hot spots indicate that the arrival of the oil palm industry in to the Papua region of what most of us think of the island of New Guinea is wreaking the same kind of destruction wrought on forest in Sumatra and Kalimantan. No shit, Sherlock. A new report calls the scale of the problem alarming with the potential for even greater losses of only a small fraction of the forest issued for oil palm plantations has been cleared. Uh, the palm oil industry's push into New Guinea, for, for as most people understand it, after nearly depleting all of the forests in Sumatra and Kalimantan, has been helped by government programs to boost foreign investment in Papua. No shit, Sherlock. <clears throat> Is there any uh, one in Humpty Dumpty tribe not understanding uh, that palm oil is, uh, as, as I was just saying, palm oil is actually the, palm, the price of palm oil went down 10% last year, that right now that there is more the shit on the market than we're able to use. But as I predicted, this is going to make, this is already one, I think, one of my uh, 2018 predictions coming true. That even though the price is depressed and there is a surplus of palm oil on this planet right now, it takes a few years for these trees to come into production. And it's going to make no difference to the fucking planet-eating uh, palm oil companies. And here we are in my first ecological meltdown roundup rant. No shit, Sherlock. Wow. Here is rhino horn seizure taps into Southeast Asian trafficking ring. No shit, Sherlock. Oh, God. Moving on. Wow. I have never thought of this. Uh, this is one of the, the, latest, the, the latest leaky. This is Roger Leakey with his commentary titled, Trees are much more than the lungs of the world. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, Leakey has studied, taught, and written about agroforestry techniques for decades and makes the point that trees are much more than the lungs of the planet, but rather they also function like the skin, the heart, the kidneys, and the intestines of the earth. There you go. Maybe I need to add Roger Leakey to my list of conversations this week. Uh, this is a very complicated story about U.S. court ruling complicates Trump's elephant and lion policy. Uh, 
in any way this is too much to go into but the bottom the, the way things stand right now u.s hunters can continue to import elephant trophies from south africa and namibia and they can import lion body parts from south africa zimbabwe and zambia uh,